Another insanely cheap subwoofer amplifier on Amazon? Let's see. Seems that a lot of people like the inexpensive amplifiers you can get off Amazon. Check link in the video description. I have a whole playlist of these cheap amplifiers I've tested. Now recently I tested one by Audio Zeroni, the LM1200.1, and soon after the test these were not available and people got kind of mad. Well it turns out they're back. They have a new model, the ZE1000.1. It was $58 when I purchased it. It's now $68 thanks to Mo from Canada for letting me know about this. Let's take a closer look and see what it's all about. First thing I noticed is they stepped up their game with the retail box here, this purple color. Definitely looks like something that can be on the shelf. However, mine was kind of beat up on the corners and I can see the Amazon delivery person right now. Here's how they handled it. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Hint to Amazon packers. Yes, this needs to go in a box, not a bag. What do you think this is, clothing or something? Anywho, let's see what's inside. Roll that unboxing music. First up, we do have a user's manual, which is actually pretty nice for this amp. Everything is in English, and it's actually laid out pretty well. Goes over all the features, shows you how to wire your subwoofers, even has the specifications on the back. We will go over the specs here in a little bit when we get to that part of the video. Little baggie inside includes a high level input, also a couple of Allen's keys, 3M mounting pad, I guess that is for the remote base knob, also some mounting screws. Speaking of the remote base knob, here it is. Uses the old style, RJ11 style connection here for the base remote, which stays well, plugged into the amplifier as well as plugged into the remote. Just simple, but it is a inexpensive amp, so we can't complain. And let's get the audio Zeroni out of the bag. It says 2000 watts on the front. Also gives a model number and it's kind of thin aluminum. That's why I'm knocking on it, not looking for somebody to answer. You big dummy. Just uh, trying to see how thick the aluminum is. Overall, the amp looks very plain, very basic. It just exudes generic with all the standard fonts on here. Let's take a look at the amp a little closer and see the features. High level input, low level RCA inputs, gain control, variable phase from zero to 180 and also the remote connection for the bass knob, zero to 12 dB bass boost at 45 Hertz, 15 Hertz to 50 Hertz subsonic, and 250 down to 50 Hertz for the low pass filter. So yeah, for a super budget amp, this has actually got a lot. Variable subsonic, variable phase, that's kind of crazy. On the opposite side, we have the connections, including the speaker terminals. These are only 12 gauge, unfortunately, but they did give you two, even though this is a monoblock amp. Just makes it easier for wiring multiple subs or dual voice coil subwoofers. Power protect LEDs, three 35 amp fuses for 105 amps of fusing. Then we have the power remote and ground. The power and ground are four gauge. Also, these are the angled style inserts, which are not my favorite, but you have to make sure you strip the wires extra long to be able to fit them all the way in. As far as dimensions go, 11 inches for the length, 6.9 inches for the width, and two inches for the height. Millimeter equivalents are there as well. As far as ratings go, four ohms, 400 watts, two ohms, 650, one ohm, 1000 watts. These are RMS ratings, also says 2000 watts max. We know about that max number. Now let's get it wired up on the bench. We have it fired up with a power LED showing. Let's fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno. Find out the true output power of this amplifier. Here on the display, you'll see on the left, the RMS power output in watts. In the middle of the ohm load, on the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote indicator so we can calculate the amplifier's efficiency. This here's my favorite part. First up, we'll do the four ohm test. It's rated 400 watts RMS power. Let's try it out here on the dyno. Certified test first takes us up to 1% distortion. And it's counting up. Can we get 400? Not quite. 386, right at 14.4, not too far off. Almost there, I was so close, we almost made it. Well, let's reset the dyno here for uncertified, see if it makes it uncertified. And honestly, for the price of this amp, if it does it uncertified, I'm really blown away. And it looks like it did. 412 watts at 14.34. 
but it gets better. Let's try dynamic, send a pulse tone into the amp. We're trying to keep the voltage right around 14.4. And here you can see 415 watts right at 14.44. As far as efficiency goes, wow. 85% efficient at four ohms, nice. Next up, we'll test two ohms. It's rated 650 watts. Let's fire up that 40 hertz test tone here. Certified test first to 1% distortion. Can we get the 650? Oh yes, 666 at 14.44. That's right, not today, devil. Let's try to reset this for the uncertified test up to clipping. See if we can beat that 666 watts. And we should be able to, and yes we do. Over 700, 703 at 14.28. Nice power. Now let's try that dynamic pulse test, simulating music, and we're getting well over 700 watts. Our voltage is a little high here because it doesn't drop quite as much as using the solid tone, but 734 watts at 14.64. Efficiency's dropped a little bit, 72% at two ohms. Now a quick PSA before we move on to the one ohm test. 63% of you guys who are watching this are not subscribed. It costs nothing to subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it if you did. Go to Wilson Audio Labs and click on the subscribe. And also, for those who do this, make sure you click the drop down and choose all because I have a lot of people who've told me we're not getting notifications that your videos are live. And that's because most of them are set to default, which is personalized and doesn't tell you when I have a new video out. So I appreciate you guys as always. If you just leave me a thumbs up, if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine too. All right, let's move on to the one ohm test with the amplifiers rated 1,000 watts. Find out if we can really get 1,000 watts out of a $60 amplifier. Certified test first here. Close, but no cigar. 972, which is literally only 3% shy of 1,000 watts. We'll call that a pass. Now, uncertified test up to clipping. Are we going to be able to bust that 1,000 watts? Yes. Check this out. 1080, 14.18. Insane value here for the money. 1200 plus dynamic burst. 1227 at 14.65. The efficiency continues to drop. We're seeing 64% at one ohm. Just remember your speakers will fluctuate the ohm load. So you'll see higher efficiency most times. As far as ratings go, the results you can see here, pause it if you wanna see everything did amazing for the price. Now, if you want to see less than one ohm, just make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video because i got a treat for you. Now for the subwoofer part, the do it bump dose section, we said, why not go ahead and try this massive audio subwoofer? On my channel at the current time, 7.1 million views showing off the 6,000 watt subwoofer. And yeah, why not try $60 amp on this massive beast? Literally, massive beast. The sub has dual one ohm coils, but we actually only used one of them. So we can get a one ohm load on the amp. Let's see how it does. Any of the rattling that you heard there was just stuff in my lab that was rattling. Now let's find out what's inside, thermals and internals. First, we're gonna take off the four screws on the bottom plate. So we can take off the bottom panel using our snap-on tool. Thank you, Scott. Find out what's inside. Here you go, you can see, as soon as I finished the speaker test, I did try the thermals and we only got about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was definitely not overheated here at the bottom at all. But you can see the internals again, it's kind of a basic amp. 25 volt, 2200 microfarad. We got six of those on the power supply section. Cap top, which are the cheapest possible available capacitors. 80 volt, 1000 microfarad on the rails. You can see the power transformer as well as the output inductor. And yeah, basic amp, not a whole lot to it. It does have the model number here, the ZE1000.1. And it has the 221118, which I assume is the build date. 
It did not have a specific serial number on this amp at all, which is a little concerning as far as warranty purposes go. Anyway, let's move on to the pros and cons. First up, the pros. Inexpensive, amazing watt per dollar. The accurate ratings pretty much for the most part. It does include a bass knob, even though it doesn't have any lights on it. It's really just a potentiometer for the gain. Has a variable subsonic filter, also variable phase. Is it low ohm stable? We're gonna have to stick around to the end of the video. Things to consider, the base remote potentiometer is kind of cheesy feeling. Small speaker terminals, about 12 gauge. Angled terminals for power, I don't like that. The cheapest of the cheap caps. There's no website for the company, even though in the manual it says it has a one year warranty. And is it worth going cheap? We've talked about this before. I mean, if you don't have any more money than about 60 bucks and you want a decent subwoofer amplifier, it's hard if you can't find something used to complain about something like this. Wow, this little amp kicked. Even that 6,000 watt subwoofer, it pushed it to a nice level. Sounded fine, didn't have any issues with it, no turn on pops, nothing like that. Thanks as always for watching. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. All right, let's promise you guys want to see these low ohm tests, especially for these cheap amps. So let's start off with a 0.8 ohm mono. Let's try it certified. See what we get here. Anything over a thousand watts is impressive. And yes, 1,035 right at 14.34. We pulled 120 amps of current. Didn't pop the fuses because these tests are kind of short. Dynamic power. Look at this. We're pushing 1,500 almost. Yes, 1,460 right at 14.6. Now, we're not done yet. Let's wire it a little lower. Let's try 0.67, but this time we're gonna try dynamic only because we know we'd pop those fuses otherwise. Dynamic test with a 40 hertz track, and here we're getting over 1,600 watts. 1,624, oop, it jumped. 1,693 at 14.58. Now lastly, half an ohm mono on this amplifier, which is a crazy resistive load Let's try it dynamic and see. Look at this. 1,997 watts. What? This ain't no dinosaur. This is an amplifier. Almost 2,000 watts. Almost reaches max power here on the dynamic test at half an ohm. I know the test means nothing. Still fun though, won't it? Big D. I'll catch you next time.